Good morning, Mosaic. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. We're reading from the book of Luke, chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Let's remember some of the words of the Lord Jesus this morning. Watch this.
happy to have you join us this morning. Let's sing about our living hope.
talk about what that means. Christ is risen from the grave. Because we, we've been so excited for today. I've seen all the Insta stories about how Sunday's coming, Sunday's coming, Sunday's coming, and it's glorious. But tomorrow is Monday. And what are we going to do with Christ is risen from the grave? What is that going to mean to us? It means that Christ has defeated death. He has conquered sin. And he has overcome any weapon used that would be formed against us. And we are told that neither angels nor demons, the present nor the future, nor any powers or height or depth or anything else in all of his creation can separate us from the love of God. Amen. And that means that anxiety or fear or porn or thoughts of suicide and drugs or alcohol or depression or any addiction can separate us from the love of God. He has overcome and it's not about what we do, it's about what He has done. And the Lamb of God has overcome. The Lamb of God has overcome. Sing it out with me this morning. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing 
Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for inhabiting the praises of your people. Uh, we thank you for your presence among us, Lord. And right now, as we prepare to give, we pray that you would touch our hearts. Lord, you gave us a great gift. We can never outgive you. But Lord, we pray that we would be cheerful and generous in our giving today. We thank you. We love you. And we just can't wait to see what you're going to do next. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As the ushers make their way through, if the basket misses you somehow, uh, just check out that uh, old-fashioned mailbox in the back. You can drop your offering there. During the break, if you want to give in the cafe, you can do that as well. And in addition, you can give online. So we just encourage you to give from your heart. Give cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. I have only one announcement for you today. For those of you who don't have any plans for uh, this afternoon, uh, Gail Trivets is opening up her home for Easter. Is Gail, where is Gail right now? Oh, there she is. Find Gail during the break. If you don't have any plans, she's opening her home to you and uh, I encourage you to check that out and just enjoy that opportunity. It's at this time of the service when we take our 10 minute break. If you're new, been here for the first time, the drinks are on the house. We've got coffee and the best hot chocolate in the city, so I encourage you to try that out. So at this time, we're going to take that 10-minute break. See you back here in 10.
Good morning, good morning. Happy Resurrection Day, eh? Yes, yes. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for this morning, for having us already experience your presence, to feel your love. Lord, we are so grateful for you today. Our hearts are big because of what you did that first Easter morn. Lord, I pray that you would just use the rest of this service to remind us just what you did, why you did it, and just what you think of us is so amazing. And it is an amazing grace that we just don't even deserve, but we will receive it with love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let me, if I could, state the obvious. If Jesus didn't arise that first Easter morning and leave the tomb to walk out among the people that he loved, nothing really matters. Let me say it another way. If Jesus didn't come back alive from the dead, or if his resurrection was a hoax, then nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing has any meaning at all. Any blessing we will enjoy, we enjoy in this life, will come to a sudden heartbreaking end without the resurrection. Any good work we accomplish will either decay or quickly become obsolete. When our life is past, any impact we leave will be washed away like footprints in the sand on the beach. When you walk and the waves come up and they wash away and it was like you were never there. If it wasn't for the resurrection, life is meaningless. Life is meaningless. When our life has passed away, what difference does it make? I know it sounds kind of gloomy, but furthermore, we have to understand this. If there was no resurrection, we waste our time trusting in and praying to some strange dead Savior. And that's what it's like if we don't believe in what we're celebrating here today. The resurrection is everything. Everything to us as Christians. It's absolutely everything. I love the way Paul said it here in 1 Corinthians. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless. And your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there is no resurrection of the dead then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you're still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone else in the world. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the pivotal event for all of us who call ourselves Christians. And it's so important that we just take the time on this day, but just like Marisa said, what about Monday? What about Monday? The resurrection means everything to us, not just on Easter Sunday when we celebrate this. And it's so important that we kind of continue to wrap our heads around that. Not only did Jesus die and rise from the dead, he did it for the likes of ungodly people like you and like me. That's who he did it for. Remember that famous scene in the Bible where they're standing in front of Pilate. Pilate was allowed to release a prisoner on a holy day. And you have in front of Pilate, on one side you have Jesus, who had never sinned. There was no sin in him. And then the other side, you have this heathen named Rick. I mean, uh, Joel, no, not Joel. Dave, it wasn't Dave, it was Dave, okay. It was Glow, yeah, you had, no, sorry, I, I got the wrong story. You had this heathen named Barabbas, that's it, Barabbas. And as a result, you would think that, that God would have had it planned that we're going to release the Holy One. We're going to release Jesus. After all, he was without sin. Of course they're going to release Jesus. But I think God had other plans. Watch this.
I think it's important that we let that sink in for a second. I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes and bow your heads. I'm going to ask you to let the Lord just bring to your mind what part of this you need to personalize today. What part of what was just said, Jesus said just for you on this Easter Sunday. What do you need to be reminded of? to be reminded folks that if Jesus had been set free instead of Barabbas we would not be sitting here today it would be meaningless but Barabbas was set free because he needed to be set free so Jesus could love Barabbas because we are Barabbas we would have no hope if it had been Jesus that was set free before he went to the cross. We would have no hope, but we do have a hope. And I want to read it to you right now. It said, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a righteous person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, while we were still ungodly, while we were still the heathen, while we were still the Barabbas, Christ died for us. Romans goes on to say, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith, any of us who come to Jesus come so by faith, is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That is, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. When you and I by faith accept the Je what Jesus did on the cross, by dying for our sins, there's an immediate change that takes place in us. The day that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, for me it was 1980, April Fool's Day in Las Vegas, Nevada when I was 22 years old. I knew that I was tired of living my own life. I knew I needed Jesus. So I surrendered one Sunday evening in a church. I just surrendered. At that point, the weight of the world was off of me. And I knew that something had changed in me. Right away, even though I didn't understand the word, I knew I was justified. The word justified means you're not guilty. You're not guilty. Because I had sinned a lot. Living in Las Vegas, being a, a GI, I had sinned a lot. But at that point, on that April Fool's Day, God said, you are justified, Rick. You are not guilty. You are not guilty. I was like, oh. And I felt it. I felt the weight of the world off my shoulders. And then I went on to understand that I was sanctified. These are big words. And the word sanctified means that you are positionally holy, Rick. You are positionally holy. I didn't feel holy. It didn't make any difference what I felt. 
Okay? Faith doesn't follow feelings. Feelings follows faith. I was positionally holy. And then I started to understand as I was discipled that I needed to get in God's word, his manual for us. And I started to read it. And then all of a sudden things started to change in my life. And then I was read where I'm promised that the Holy Spirit now lives inside of me. And I'm thinking, wow, he's my helper, the Bible says. And it's no longer I that's just doing this by gutting it out. It wasn't, it wasn't my own self-reliance. It wasn't my own strength. It was the Holy Spirit working through me. And I, and I knew change was happening in me. I remember coming to the Lord and the first time I took the Lord's name in vain, a day or two later, after I accepted Jesus, it was like I had swallowed dirt. I immediately like, oh, what did I just say? And I cussed like a sailor. But all of a sudden, after I accepted Jesus and I said Jesus Christ in a derogatory manner, it was like I had swallowed dirt. I couldn't believe how bad I felt. How it was just a, this sick feeling in me. I'm going, I can't do that anymore. And then things just started to change. And I've been changing the last 40 years. It's just been a constant change. Because see, at salvation, you and I got it all. There's nothing we lack. And now it's a point of unpacking it. There's no more you're going to get. There's no more you're going to get. It's not a question of doing. It's a question of being. And Jesus gave it all to you. And he says now the optimum word is just mature. Just mature in your faith. Just continue to read my word and grow in me. Continue to let the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us be all that he wants to be to us. And you continue to change. And you can see it in your life over and over and over again. And all of a sudden, you, you used to be really impatient with this area in your life. And you find that you have more patience. Or you used to be really bitter when this person's name came up of this person who harmed you or hurt you greatly. And all of a sudden, one day you heard a message that said, we need to forgive. We need to forgive. And then all of a sudden, one day you just said, Lord, I'm not going to hold bitterness or anger or angst or anything against them anymore. I forgive them. And then another burden is lifted off of you. And then when that name comes up again, you're not triggered. And you start to see change over and over in your life. And that's, that's till the day we die. We're going to continue to change. We just got to submit ourselves to God and say, not I, but thy. Not me, but you. Your will, God, not my will. Because in all of life, to serve God is life. It's not about me anyway. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about his will for your life. So as you look at change, I want to introduce to you right now some dear folks here. I've been a pastor here for 14 years. My wife and I founded this church 14 years ago. And we have just amazing people at Mosaic. If you're visiting for the first time and you live here, come back. Because you're the most amazing people in all of Lynchburg. We have the most amazing people. Because they're just submitting themselves to say, Lord, change me. I, wanted, I used to be this way, but I feel myself changing. And that's the whole thing. And I, got, I just want to introduce you to some very honest and authentic and real people right now who have allowed the Lord to change them. So just watch.
Let's give it up for these dear people. None of them or nor I would say that we have arrived. We, we haven't. We're, we're all a work in progress. And that's every one of us in this room. And as long as, I, like I said before, we continue to submit ourselves to God and His will and not our will, we will continue to see deeper and deeper joy and more and more change. And these people's lives have changed. Your lives have changed, several of you. And I would just say let's continue to let God have his way. We are the clay. He is the potter. Let's let him just continue to form in us what he will. Amen? Amen. You guys can have a seat. Maybe you would like to uh, maybe it, your life hasn't t- changed that much or you have never accepted the Lord as your Savior or maybe you have accepted the Lord as your Savior but you've drifted far from Him. Maybe uh, you have just said, you know, I, I'm no thank you. And maybe your life has just really gone in an unholy direction. I want to give you an opportunity to just have a do-over on this Easter Sunday. I'm going to do that after this next part. I just want you to have the opportunity before you leave here today to rededicate your life to the Lord. Or if you've never met Jesus for the first time, I want you to have that opportunity to meet him. But before we do that, we have such a powerful display of Jesus for you. So sit back and just enjoy. If you're on that side, you might want to move over. And feel free to come over here for seats or if you can make sure you can see. Just put your attention over here. Oh, shame is a prison. It's cruel as a grave. Shame. Take my name, oh love. 
I know that every artist, when they do a work of any art, they have lots going on in your heart and your head. So tell us what was going on in your heart as you were preparing for this. I wanted to bring us all into the tomb. One day we all have to face death. And we've already faced the death of some of our loved ones. I have. And it's just a joy to know that Christ overcame sin, death, and the grave. And he arose in a new body, incorruptible. He could walk through walls and appear and disappear. And we're going to be like him one day. We're saved. We're born again. Our spirit and soul are resurrected. Our soul is learning to follow. And our body one day will be made just like him. When he comes again, he'll resurrect us and we'll be in heaven with him forever. And we'll all be together if you know him. This is, this is not the end right here because of him. Amen. Thank you. Easter 2019. I just want to close this. And I want you, though, to have a minute to talk to the Lord. Like I said earlier, what you've heard here today and everything that we've done, you've heard the gospel. The gospel, the definition of the word gospel means good news. And we have shared with you to the best that we could our, the good news of Jesus Christ and him resurrected. Like I had to make the decision on that April 1st day, 40 years ago, what I was gonna do with that. And that's your decision here today. If you've never accepted Jesus as your savior, the scriptures I've read, it's, it's all in there. Unless a man be born again, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. Jesus died for you and for me. And like Glow said, we all want to be together one day in eternity. It's, it's not just for here. So I'm going to ask if you would bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand or raise your hand or say a word. This is between you and God. So if you're sitting here today and you've never invited him in, you've never acknowledged what he's done for you, You've never accepted Jesus as your personal savior. If you've never done that, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I'm just going to ask you to just talk to God quietly in your own silence. This is between you and God. And you can repeat this prayer after me. And you're not talking to me, you're talking to the Lord. So this one is if you've never accepted Jesus. So pray this prayer between you and God. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you now realizing that I'm a sinner. Realizing I don't think I know you. I acknowledge today that you are the Savior of the world. You are my savior if I so choose. So Lord, right now, I come to you and I acknowledge you, Lord, Jesus the Christ, who died for my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and come into my life and to save me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you for going to the cross just for me. Lord Jesus, I will follow you from this day forward. And I will acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. For those of you who are Christians, you at one point or another said the prayer I just said with maybe others in this room, but you have drifted. 
for whatever reason, you're, you're far from God. Maybe you thought you could gut it out, like we heard in the video, I'll, I'll, I'll try harder. No, you won't. I'll, I'll be more disciplined. No, you won't. It's, it's not about you. And so I would like to say a prayer of rededication of your life to come back to Jesus, to come back to that first love, what it felt like that first time that you couldn't believe that he died for you. So I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me for those of you who have drifted away from God. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your grace that is brand new every morning. I don't know why I left you. Maybe I thought I could do it on my own. But I have discovered I can't. To God right now, I rededicate my life to you. I'm going to look back on Easter 2019 and say I got a do-over. I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ. And this time, it's not going to be about me. It's going to be about you, Jesus. So help me, Holy Spirit to live a spirit-filled life, to know that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So Father, I thank you for these dear people. And I ask you, Lord, if they have said that prayer of rededication or that prayer of salvation, that they would tell somebody, Lord, that they would contact us, that they would do whatever they feel comfortable with. But they would not sit on that because we, we need to tell others. So, Father, I pray for each and every one of them today who just said either one of those prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. I remember when I said the sinner's prayer or whatever you recall what I just did. Um, I, I really wanted to tell somebody. And I, I needed help to grow. And I needed to be discipled. And I went to the church and I said, what do I do next? And they assigned someone to me. And I met and we just read the Bible together. They started me in the book of John. And they said, Rick, there's going to be some confusing passages maybe that you're not going to understand. Just, just keep reading. Write things down. We'll meet with you. We will continue to help you and to equip you. Little did I know I was called to the ministry at that point. I had no idea what that even meant. That was 40 years ago. Been a pastor for 37 years. I had no idea what that meant, but God did. And he pulled me out of the mire and the muck that I was living in. And he said, this is what I've called you to, Rick. And I'm just so thankful for the people that were around me, that encouraged me and just discipled me. You have people here who would like to pray with you if you would like prayer then come on up and let them pray with you. If you have other questions, which you probably should, especially if it's the first time you came to him or you're coming back to him and your heart is hard to shake the shame or the guilt or things like that, you, I can say one thing, but that doesn't mean you feel it. And again, we said before, faith doesn't follow feelings. Feelings follows faith. And then you need to kind of know what you believe because you behave what you believe. So what do you believe? Because that's what you're going to behave. And so it's important that you have solid beliefs and that you're able to keep your feelings and emotions in check. Don't lose them. Jesus was full of emotions. It's good to be emotional, but you've got to be careful to make sure you have a balance there. Don't lose who you are. But we would like to encourage you. If you'd like to meet with one of us privately, you want to say, hey, can we just have coffee? Absolutely. Uh, everybody here, myself, Ron, our, one of our elders, we will be happy to meet with you because you may have questions. And that's what our job is. We are leaders of this church and others here. We're here to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's our job. We, we love that. We enjoy that. And so if you would like somebody to come walk alongside of you, there's lots and lots of people here that would be happy to do that. And so this Christian life was not meant to be lived alone. We were born for community. We were born for community. Do not forsake the assembly of the believer. We need each other. We need each other. 
That's the only way we're going to make it. And so I just encourage you, if you don't have a church, we're here or find a good church. There's 375,000 in Lynchburg. No, not really. So feel free to find a good church. There's a lot of them here. Uh, but we just want you to know we'll be, we'll be honored to walk alongside of you. So let's, let me bless you as you go. Please stand. Please stand. Again, please know that these people are here to pray with you at the end of this time that I bless you. Feel free to come forward. Just receive this. Put out your hands. Just put your hands. Father, I bless these dear people. Lord, I bless them this week as they rise up and as they lie down, as they enter and as they exit. Lord, as they go to work tomorrow morning or the next day or the next day or the next day, I pray, Lord, that you would bless them above and beyond what they could hope or ask for. I pray, God, that you would give them a renewed zeal and boldness to not sit on the gifts that are inside of them, to not sit on the faith that they have. Lord, we were born for community. We were also born to go and make disciples of all, of all people. So I pray you give us a renewed boldness and excitement about our Christian faith our excitement, Lord, about who you are. And so, Father, bless these dear saints. Watch over these dear people. They are incredible. I don't have to tell you that. You, you are crazy about them. So, Father, bless them. Bless them so they can barely stand it. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Love you guys. If you like prayer, please come forward.